What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with Zero. Welcome to a Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Or I should say, welcome back to our Sun and Moon anime reviews. It's actually been about two months, just over two months, since we've done our last anime review. Over the next couple weeks, my hope is to catch up, to do all of the episodes that we've missed so far. I think there's like nine of them that we need to do. Uh, but we're going to get to it. My schedule just got a little too busy that I had to let this series go. Um, also, the other series coming back is our TCG opening. So it should be coming back um, small. Maybe one this weekend, and I don't know when the next one is, but I'm pretty sure one this weekend. In fact, you can almost see it off this off screen. Um, the, the box is sitting right over there that we're going to be opening. But anyway, let's jump into it. Now, the last episode that we reviewed, the group was leaving the Hokulani Observatory, and they wound up taking a detour that led them into Mount Lanakila. Um, the group got separated after Turtonator shell exploded, setting the group flying in the cave. Uh, and half the group came across a group of Alolan Sandshrew that seemed to be training against each other because their, their, their home had been taken over by a Tyranitar. Lily's Vulpix and the lead Alolan Sandshrew wound up teaming up to defeat this uh, Tyranitar, causing it to run away. After they got out of the cave, Lily received an Icium Z and an Ice Stone from the newly evolved Alolan Sand Slash, which Snowball declined to use the Ice Stone at this time. Now, this episode, we were theorizing if this was maybe the episode that uh, Toracat was going to evolve. Let's jump into it. It started off uh, with the Mask Royale at the Royal or the Battle Royale Dome, um, fighting against an Electivire, and all of the kids were watching from their respective homes. Toracat, of, co of course, being the most interested because of the battle we had a few weeks ago. Um, the opponent is a member of the Revengers, which is a bad team that constantly breaks the rules. The trainer was. Uh, the trainer was seen pulling on the leg of Incineroar and distracting them all through this episode. Um, some of the kids noticed that Lana and Mallow actually got to go watch the match, probably because they live on that island. I think that's a nice little detail that they threw in. Those two went to the match together. Um, but while the trainer was distracting Incineroar, his Electivire sneaked up, sneaks up but gets knocked off by Incineroar. As he goes for a final throat chop to finish the battle, Incineroar gets hit from the back by a Magmortar. So it, it winds up being a two versus one. The battle ends and Magmortar, Magmortar's trainer challenges the Mask Royale to a single battle to declare the strongest to which he accepts. That's going to be taking place tomorrow. Now, Kukui arrives home where Burnett and Ash meet him at the door with their little enjoy business going on, which is how the Mass Royale introduces himself into every battle. And they're excited because they've decided to go, uh, they've decided to go to this match that's happening tomorrow. And Burnett tells Kukui that he's going to be coming along with them. And Kukui is, is a little nervous because he's like, um, uh... What do we do? Because and, and it confirmed it. It showed it. There was this little scene um, where, before Kukui went home where he gets backstage and he tells his incinerator, he takes off his mask, fi fully revealing that he's Kukui and says that they're going to win. That's when the intro runs. The title of this episode is called The Young Flame of Alola. Royal Ash is born. Or Royal Satoshi is born. Now, that following day, the entire group arrives at the Battle Royale. And the warm-up match consists of a Polyrath, a Machamp, a Primarina, and a Decidueye. It's actually pretty cool. See four top-notch Pokemon going off against each other. While they're sitting in the audience, Kukui sneaks off and gets caught and claims he's going to shop. And he's going to U-turn right back. He'll be right back. Just after that, Magmortar and his trainer are introduced as Kukui is running backstage with his Incineroar, trying to change, trying to get ready, scrambling for the match, sprinting off to try and get it, and somehow makes it right on time for his introduction. As Incineroar jumps in the stage, the stadium lights turn off, and when they turn back on, Incineroar is surrounded by an Alolan Muck, an Alolan Golem, the Polyrath we saw from earlier, and the Magmortar that's going to be his opponent. So all four of them launch an attack on him, leaving him pretty damaged, which one of those was a hydro pump. I don't understand why 
it did as little damage as it does, but Toracat, Ash's Toracat, gets mad and jumps down to attack him, attacking the Magmortar with Flame Charge. The Magmortar was getting ready to jump from the uh, the corner pole thing, corner pole, whatever it's called, uh, post maybe, <laughs> on to Incineroar while the other three were holding him down, and Toracat interrupts and knocks him off, and Toracat's all mad, and all of a sudden the Electivire from earlier shows up, and there's just all kinds of chaos everywhere going on. Now, the guy from several episodes ago that wanted to buy Kukui's family's farm shows up. His name is Borgain, if you remember Bourdain. I'm pretty sure it was Borgain. I think that's what I wrote down several times. Uh, but Borgain turns out to be the boss of the Revengers. Who would have known? His goal is to win the Battle Royale Dome. He wants to buy it. He wants to use it for his hotel thing that he has going on. But he suggests a double battle. Incineroar and Toracat versus Magmortar and Electivire. To which, of course, they accept. By the way, Team Rocket are randomly the judges here. Sure. Sure. Now, the Revengers are introduced, announced, and are greeted with many boos. And they say, this is just like... The cheers, this is just cheers to us. We know we're the bad guys. We know you're going to boo us. This is cheers to us. And the Royal Mask team is greeted. Ash winds up getting his own mask to put on and to use for this. And Burnett's looking around trying to figure out where Kukui went. Aren't these two married? How is he going to keep that, that, that kind of stuff a secret? But it starts off as a 1v1 tag battle. It starts off in Cineroar versus... Um, Magmortar, no, in, yeah, Incineroar versus Magmortar. Incineroar is the first to tag out, and this was a very weird moment. The Magmortar goes for faint attack, and when he does, he dances like a ballerina, and Toracat gets distracted and starts grooming himself and gets hit in the back of the head. Is that really what faint attack was? I thought faint attack he would like disappear and then reappear. I, I don't know. Off the stage, Polyrath grabs onto Toracat's leg and distracts him. Like we said before, these Revengers play very dirty, so it's not even the two that are in the battle. It's another person comes and the Elector, um, excuse me, Toracat gets hit by a wild charge from the Electivire and is starting to get hurt. And Incineroar tags back in and attacks with the Darkest Lariat before again getting grabbed off stage by the Muck and the Poliwhirl. I mean, every. every Craziness. There's just insanity going on. Alolan Marowak, that's Kiawe's Alolan Marowak and Lana's Poplio come from the sidelines and attack them. And the Mass Royale is like, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I know they're fighting dirty, but we're not going to go to their level. We're going to fight it clean. To which, of course, the whole audience explodes. And oh my god, the Mass Royale is so cool. Toracat leaps from the corner post and launches a huge fire fang on the Magmortar, dealing a lot of damage. Um, but Magmortar comes back with a flurry of karate chops, getting him uh, to actually trapping Toracat in the corner where Toracat's blocking the attack, and he jumps free and uses his newly learned revenge and winds up knocking out both the Magmortar and the Electivire with this attack. I was not expecting that to be what happened in this episode. We were thinking, I was thinking, Toracat was going to evolve into Incineroar. He just wound up learning revenge and took out both of them. Now, Borgain says, no, 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 no. This match isn't over. All of you go attack. And so all of his goons jump in, and and the Mass Royale's like, you know what, Toracat, tag out real quick. And Cineroar tags in, and he hits the Z, he hits the Z move. He hits the, he, he uses his, actually, wait, 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 wait. Should I, should I, should I use this instead? Maybe I should use this one instead. Ooh, wait. To check out our ultra you have to check out our ultrasound wonderlock to see what that thing is uh, but anyway he hits his incinium z move goes for it just bow and destroys everyone knocks out all the pokemon in one huge attack so the double royales have won after this borgain is like nah you haven't won yet i still got my pangoro and sends out his Pangoro, and his Pangoro... <laughs> my computer autocorrected this to Pandora. Anyway, his Pangoro gets double attacked by a flame charge in the Darkest Lair, and the battle actually ends. So they're coming up, they're celebrating, and Ash and Torcat claim, next time, we want to battle Mass Royale one-on-one -on -one and get revenge for the first battle that they had. And then Kukui shows up at the very end with a couple bags of 
uh, of stuff that he went shopping for and says he got lost. And that was the end of the episode. Now, usually we would look forward to the next week, but our next episode, to break the fourth wall, I'm about to record right now. Uh, and it should go up tomorrow. I haven't watched it. I'm about to watch it, record it, all that stuff uh, right now. And actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's break the fourth wall a little more. The next episode, which you should see tomorrow, my hair might actually look good. So anyway, if you enjoyed our anime review, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below what you thought about the episode, and we'll see you next time. Until then, have a blessed day.